All right, welcome to the meeting of the Murfreesboro City Council. Um, consistent with the governor's order and the declaration of emergency with the city, members of the council are all participating by means that's been determined necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare uh, in light of the, the coronavirus pandemic. Right, with that, I'm going to bring the meeting to order, and Council Member Ron Martin has our prayer and our prayer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, please bow your heads. I'll say the prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we're very thankful for all the opportunities that we have to remind us of the daily blessings that you give us, especially during the difficult time that we're facing. We know that there are a lot of people suffering. Uh, we are certainly doing our dead level best to help and to encourage and support and lead when and where we can. We'll ask that you be with all those healthcare workers that are putting um, their their health and wellness at risk to serve others, and we ask that you be with us and watch over us as we continue to work through this crisis. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Yeah. I guess I will do the pledge. Um, I'll start it off. I pledge allegiance yes, to the flag, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic. Republic. For which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty with and, justice for all. and justice for all. Thank you, Ron. Okay, I um, yes, have sir. one ceremonial item tonight that I want to read over. Uh, we have actually, this is on the 18th, but you know, we talk about all the things that our our healthcare providers are doing, and we talk about the things our police officers, our firefighters, but uh, two groups of people that are also out there, our, our water and sewer department, but also our linemen with the Murfreesboro Electric Department are also out there working. So I want to read a proclamation for you. Whereas recognizing linemen, the profession of linemen, the contributions of, of these brave men and women who protect public safety and expressing support for the designation of National Lineman Appreciation Day, and whereas the profession of linemen is steeped in personal, family, and professional tradition, and whereas linemen are often first responders during storms and other catastrophic events, work to make the scene safe for other public safety heroes, and whereas linemen work thousands of volts of electricity, high top power lines, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to keep electricity flowing, and whereas linemen must often work under dangerous conditions far from their families to construct and maintain the energy infrastructure, infrastructure of the United States, and whereas linemen put their lives on the line every day with little recognition from the community regarding the danger of their work. Now, therefore, I, Shane McFarland, Mayor of the City of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, on behalf of the entire City Council, do hereby proclaim April 18th, 2020, as National Lineman Appreciation Day and ask all the citizens to recognize the efforts of linemen in keeping the power on and protecting public safety. So I want to make sure and say thank you to Murfreesboro Electric Department employees, and we appreciate you for the job that you're doing. All right, moving to that, we uh, don't have anything on a consent agenda. We'll move straight into new business. And we have the extension of the emergency pay policy, and this is presented by administration. Mr. Tindall. Yeah, Mayor and City Council, on uh, March the 18th, the uh, uh, City Council enacted an emergency pay plan that allows us to uh, continue to pay our employees through the uh, current crisis. Uh, the term for that plan was uh, is coming to an end, and um, because of the uncertainty of when uh, the uh, situation will resolve, uh, we're asking council to extend the pay plan for another uh, emergency pay plan for another 20 days. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Mr. Mr. Tindall. Yes. Does this include uh, part-timers like the crossing guards that work by our school system? Uh, the extension includes uh, part-times as, as um, we've discussed with other employees, if they if uh, they have any questions about the pay plan, they need to work with their supervisors and fill out the appropriate forms and submit them to HR, and then um, we can uh, we can uh, get their uh, their pay continued. Okay, can uh, can you maybe look at what it will cost us to uh, pay them for uh, their time? This is a new normal. You know, everything happened is a new normal. 
And um, can you just put the figures together uh, and see what it looks like to go on and pay them? And, and I know you're saying going up the ch uh, command, the chain of command, I understand that, but you know, it's just, it's devastation now. Uh, can, what do you think about that, Mayor? Just uh, looking at the figures and seeing what it would cost us to pay them? We could, we can, if you're talking about the part-time employees, we could, we could run, uh, the, the amounts are budgeted currently, uh, so it doesn't change the budget at all. Um, right. And we do a calculation on, on the part-time employees. Part-time employees receive uh, continued pay under both the federal act and under uh, our emergency pay plan for closed facilities. Um, and again, the amounts are budgeted. But uh, if you'd like to know what the number is, we'd certainly have, we can take a look at that. And uh, yes, and not only looking at it, uh, see if we can go on and pay, like for instance, the crossing guards, um, the bus drivers are getting paid and they are part time and the bus monitor people. And I, it's just something, you know, we can look at as a council. I don't know if it will really cost that much and it was already in the uh, budget. So that's what I was concerned about. Uh, I've been getting a few calls on it and uh, and I'll give you the people who are, have been calling. Just take a look at it, if you don't mind, and bring us back the figures. Well, if they, it seems to be there's misunderstanding. As if they fill out the forms, part-times are included in the emergency pay, pay plan. Uh, bus drivers and bus monitors are paid by the school, so they have their own pay plan. But for the city, uh, because the crossing guards are paid by the police department, uh, those are uh, accommodated in the emergency pay plan. Mm -hmm. But they need to they need to work with their supervisor to fill out the appropriate forms. So okay, let's look at that in the budget. Okay. Craig, I know uh, Madeline. I know Madeline mentioned the uh, concern with the budget, and and uh, I know we're meeting tomorrow, you and I are, to discuss uh, the capital improvement plan and where the city's budget currently is, but uh, uh, I think we're at approximately $40 million or something like that in uh, emergency reserves. Is that still holding true? I don't think that's changed. Uh, Ms. Wright might have a better, or, or Aaron might have a better uh, knowledge of the exact number, but yes, we do have a reserve fund. Uh, again, all the funds that that we're talking about now have been budgeted, and uh, we won't feel actually the financial effect on the revenues to a substantial extent uh, for another month or two. Yeah, I mean, I think that is the point, though. The expenses have been budgeted, but the revenue also that we've budgeted for is going to be substantially down for our fourth quarter, I would imagine. Correct. Right. That's Correct. Right. And that's my point. That's where that's where I'm coming from. I'm just wanting to make sure that uh, we have the revenue coming in to support the budget. And uh, and I know we're discussing that tomorrow, but uh, I just want to uh, assure the public that uh, the city's currently under a pretty good financial situation and uh, we're not I know a lot of people are asking questions like, are you about to do another tax increase and stuff like that? And I think the answer is absolutely not. I don't think there could possibly be a worse time uh, to even consider that. So uh, certainly we need to continue to tighten our belts and uh, make sure that uh, we're financially prudent with the uh, revenues that the city does have. Right. right. And that's, and that'll be good. You know, we just, this hasn't happened in a 100 years and we are all in shock and we all are scrounging the, uh, there's more people hungry and abused than it has ever been. And so as a city, I would just like, cause it's not, we're not talking about an astronomical figure coming out of the budget. Just let's take a look at it. And, you know, I'd like to see us pay those crossing guards cause they are, uh, they are used to that money and some of them are already working two and three jobs. So that's all. I just want us to take a look at it. Okay, so you have this uh, emergency pay policy in front of you. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. We approve the recommendation. Second. All right, Councilman Shacklett, Councilman Wade, uh, Ms. Wright, you'll please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. 
Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin, I think you're on mute. Okay, Melissa, let's just move to the next. I just keep going. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Ronnie Martin. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, thank you. We're going to move to resolution 20R08 to refinance city general obligation water resources variable debt, uh, variable rate debt, and this is also brought by the administration. Mr. Tindall. Yes, uh, Mayor Council, this uh, resolution, uh, you'll recall that one was brought before Council uh, prior. Uh, this has to do with refunding of our variable rate debt. Uh, what this resolution allows, the amended resolution allows for us to uh, not only go to market, but to uh, do a negotiated placement. Um, if, if we uh, determine that with the uncertainties in the market, that that makes more sense and we get a better rate to do that. Um, so it really just opens up uh, the avenues for us to secure financial, finan uh, financing that's most beneficial to the city. All right, any questions? All right, do we no have questions? I, move. I make a motion. We approve the recommendation. Second. Second. Councilman Shacklett, Councilman Smotherman. Melissa, if you'll call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lawrence. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll now move to MTSU Temporary Parking Transit Use Agreement. Mayor and members of the City Council, uh, there's a uh, about a 0.48 acres of land that was used for the uh, parks and rec maintenance facility and uh, that is now being converted into a parking area a temporary parking area for MTSU uh, we'll be leasing that to them and receiving about ten thousand thirty six dollars uh, a year for the use of that as they continue to grow their campus here at the airport so I appreciate your approval of that uh, transient uh, use agreement land lease agreement with MTSU any questions for, for uh, Mr. Gerke? Not so much a question pertaining to uh, what the subject is, but uh, how are we progressing, Chad, on the uh, completion of the terminal and how are we coming along out at the airport? In the terminal the construction continues. It's looking good. Uh, I'm talking with Greg McKnight every day, uh, and he believes that's on budget and on schedule. So uh, we're looking at possible move-in date of around August. Uh, we are understanding that there are some going to be some furniture and maybe some audiovisual equipment that may be delayed just because uh, where they're coming from, those states are closed down. But uh, I think we're still going to be in a, a move in period of around August. There's no other questions. I move for approval. Second. All right, you have a motion and a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, do we have any uh, beer permits? Yes, Mayor, we have one tonight. We have a new restaurant coming to 2113 Memorial Boulevard, Suite A. They still need to finish up their building codes inspections, but their background check is in order. So if you approve it, we will issue that once everything is finalized. Okay, any questions? There are no questions, I move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Way. Aye. Mayor McFarland. 
Aye. Do we have any other business from staff? All right. Any other business from the council? All right. Um, would we, we did a briefing last night, but we want to say, um, Mr. Tindall, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had two positive tests uh, confirmed in Rutherford County. Uh, that took us to a total number, I think, of 273. Does that sound correct? It sounds correct. Yeah. So I want to make sure uh, if you didn't get to watch the briefing last night, go back and watch that. There's all kinds of information on our city website for SBA loans for uh, unemployment. There's all kinds of things that that you uh, you can find on our city website. I want to commend our staff, commend uh, all of our emergency service providers, our healthcare workers. You're doing a phenomenal job, and, uh, and we want to uh, keep up the good work. I know we're all ready to get back to work. So, if there's no other business, we will stand. Yes, yes. I know you mentioned everybody except the citizens of Murfreesboro there, and I think it goes without saying that we really appreciate everybody who is staying at home and sitting out in your garden this afternoon enjoying the pretty weather and uh, uh, the, the birds and the planes are flying over and, and, and life goes on, I know, but uh, the uh, the city of Murfreesboro is, is doing a great job. Our citizens are of uh, staying at home and staying safe. So thank you to all those. Amen. All right, folks, if we don't have any other business, we will stand adjourned.